In today's video, I will show you how to make a heat map representation of your fluorescence image or any type of image that you have. But in the first part of this video, I'm going to show you this uh, image processing using a fluorescent sample. And in the second part of the image of the analysis, I will show you that you can also use non fluorescent sample to show the same thing because this sample here is an histology. Uh, looks like a yeah you, uh, specimen from histological experiment. So here I have my sample, and what I'm going to do, I've taken this image from the confocal. What I will do is first to split them into two different. Uh, sorry, to split them into two different uh, channel. Since we have the channel that is the gray, and the other channel which is the fluorescent. Uh, channel the color changed because of the color the first error that I made so I'll change this back to green and this back to gray so these are just all pseudo colors because you have a gray value from the microscope okay so these are the two images so what I'm going to do for making the representation because this image is my stacked image I will first project it into a maximum intensity projection and that should make my analysis to be straightforward so uh, so click on this go to image stacks z project to make a maximum intensity projection and as you can see now I have all the different slices all together into a single projection and to display it as a heat map like shown in this image here in this uh, publication what we will do is to go to our lookup table you can decide to use a spectrum that will give you a uh, color coding but you can see we're using the spectrum my black also has been shaded as red so that's not a good color to display our heat map rather I will choose the 16 colors and using the 16 colors now I have a blue everything in blue and other area where we have the stronger signal so let me make a simple uh, another uh, maximum intensity projection <coughs> excuse me so now you can see this too trying to put them side by side so you can see that now we have a heat map of our fluorescent image just like they did in this particular manuscript one thing that is missing is that this part it's difficult for us to tell whoever is viewing what the blue section is and what the red section is so that means we need to calibrate the image to include a scale bar and for us to do this all we have to do is to go to analyze select the tool options tools and click on calibration bar if you click on calibration bar you can see that now we have a calibration bar here you can change the location of this calibration bar if it is obstructing your image so you can see you can make it on lower right or any you can even decide if you want it to be at a particular selection just draw there and it will be there you can make it a separate image so if, if you click on so first let me show you what i meant in the upper right you can see that it's obstructing our image so we can make this we can reduce its um its size by just changing the zoom factor to be one so you can see now we have it reduced in size you can even make it 1.5 just that it's still obstructing our image so i will personally leave it at one you can decide on the font size by default the font size will be 12 you can decide on the size you want it to be to make it readable for this image you can see that 20 is doing a good job you can decide on the number of uh, letters that you want the scale bar to rep to show if you want it to show just to um, just two which is the maximum and the uh, minimum then you change it to two but usually five is good because it shows you the middle number as well as you can see so now we have that and then we say okay now this particular scale bar has been engraved into this image 
you can decide also if you want your calibration uh, bar to be outside of the image because if you are working with image that has if you are going to be working with or uh, you're going to be displaying multiple images you don't want each image to be repeating the scale bar especially if they are all if they were all captured with the same set settings of uh, light intensity then we can just repeat that process by going to analyze tools and then we select our calibration bar again and tell it that we want it to make a separate scale bar that way our scale bar is no longer attached to the image and you can decide where you want to place it in your figure or in your presentation but for this purpose of tutorial i'm going to leave it inside for now because it's safer that way so i'll just leave it at the upper right say okay and then it's there inside the image sorry let me repeat that because it's covering the it's covering the image so a zoom factor what am i doing analyze to calibration bar a zoom factor of one so that it's not obstructing the image so now we have this if you want to make for a stack whereby you would then be able to make a, a montage later then i'm going to go back to the original image that i have so i'm just going to extract some section of this image for the sake of the montage that we want to make so i don't have to uh, or well, let's just leave it as it is that's fine so to make our montage what we first do is we do our color coding according to the different area right and now we can tell it to we can make the calibration to calibrate but in this instance it's best to put the calibration as a separate image so that's what we have here i'll close the one from before and now to make the montage all you just have to do is go to image select stacks and tell it to make montage if you tell it to make a montage you can tell it you can reduce the scale factor or leave it as a one-to-one -one ratio and this is going to display our montage when you say okay you can see now we have the montage and the different slices have been shown so if you want to have exactly like in this image you will need to reduce the number of slices that you are displaying is because this is the z stack that i've taken which is showing from the top image and the last slice and that's why we have this big um, multiple images showing the section where we have the highest intensity in the image at different time at different position of the image so i hope you find this video useful if you have a further analysis that you would like me to display or show you how to do please send me an email i'm happy to look into the analysis i'm not promising you that i will do it but i will try to see if i can do it and if i'm unable to i will let you know in my email response i wish you all the best with your analysis and please don't forget to subscribe to this channel your subscriptions motivates me to keep looking for more content to make thank you and goodbye